Well, good morning, everyone. My name is Wes Nichols, and I am the new pastor for students here at Highland Park Press. I'm so excited to be here with you on this special morning where we're being led by our adult and student choirs and worship in this special lessons and carol service. And I particularly love the story of the wise men that was just read to us, or Magi, from Matthew 12, 2, verses 1 through 12. And I just want to share with you a little bit this morning about what this story teaches us about the idea of love during Advent. Now, I'm going to be honest with you. The story of the Magi is not normally a passage I turn to when I think about the idea of love. It, in fact, is something that seems completely absent from the story. Typically, when you discuss the wise men during Advent, you talk about the gifts that they bring to the Christ child or the star that they're following. And in truth, these two pieces of the story are incredibly important because they herald and identify the fact that a king has been born that something beautiful has entered the earth. But as I read and reread this passage, I couldn't stop thinking about all the movement that happens in the story. And what I mean by this is that the wise men move from east to west. The star moves across the heavens to guide them to Christ. And then when the wise men eventually come into contact with Christ in person, they move forward toward him and they fall down to worship him. There's a lot of movement happening. And as I was reading this, I was wondering and wondering what is the gravitational pull that keeps things going? And the simple answer to this, my friends, is love. Have you ever thought about the fact that the phrase falling in love is a phrase that involves forward movement. I mean, sure, we don't say falling forward in love because that would be weird, but if you said falling backward in love, that would have a completely different connotation, right? You fall backward from things that you wanna get away from, from a bad smell or something like that, and you move forward towards something that you are pursuing. If you see a close friend for the first time in a long time, it's completely natural to run toward them and embrace them. In the same way, parents, you and your children, more likely than not, run toward one another because you love one another. And then think about the actual blocking of a wedding ceremony. The bride comes down the aisle to meet the groom. She moves toward him. And then when the father gives the bride away, the bride and groom move toward one another. And then they both move toward the altar in worship. When you love someone, you move toward them. I love to tell people about when I first met my wife, Caroline. And I love to say that on that blind date, I knew that I was madly in love with her and I was going to spend the rest of my life with her. But in truth... That's a good anecdote that just makes me sound like a good husband. And I didn't love her when I first saw her. I liked her a lot. I liked her because she was incredible and beautiful and smart and funny. And I loved being around her. She was way out of my league, but I didn't love her immediately. Over time though, as I got to know her and I invested in the journey of my heart toward her heart, I fell in love with her. And a slightly longer amount of time later, she also fell in love with me. <laughs> I like to say that I stuck in her head like the lyrics to 8675309 by Tommy Two-Tone. <laughs> you know, it just, it keeps ringing over and over. I, I'm not going to sing it. You know it. <laughs> so at the beginning of our relationship, I didn't have all the facts. I just knew that what I saw in front of me was worth following. And I took a step of faith without having all the knowledge. And this is exactly what happens with the wise men in the story that we just read. They knew the prophecy of the star and that it heralded something greater than they could ever imagine. But they didn't know that what they found beneath the star would be a savior. They just moved forward like how I did when Caroline and I were dating. It took time and they faced difficulty along the way. But when the, they got to the end of their journey, they saw someone who they couldn't help but love. This makes me think a lot about what it was like for me when I first met Jesus and asked him to be my savior. That feeling of awe was overwhelming, but the current that fed that awe, the undercurrent of it all was love. I knew that Christ loved me and that made me love him back. All of the questions and doubts and listening and discernment that I had experienced all throughout my life up until that point 
where I said yes to Jesus led me there, brought me to that point. And when my heart opened to him, I felt his love for me and I couldn't help but love him back. This is the love, friends, that the wise men model to us in the passage. They are the perfect picture of our own journeys of faith that we go through in life with the ups and downs and twists and turns that ultimately result in forward movement. There are always going to be voices like Herod's that we hear that seem powerful or more enticing. But when you finally arrive at the feet of Jesus and see the love that he brought into the world for you, it's impossible to deny that you love him too. Love is the undercurrent of everything within Advent because it's what brought Jesus into the world in the first place. The wise men represent us moving toward Christ and learning about love for God in the process. But we also cannot forget about the movement that God makes toward us in the first place. Jesus moved through space and time to be born here because he loved us so much and he knew that we could not withstand the darkness of this world without him. Jeremiah 31.3 prophesies about this very occurrence saying, I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. This movement of Christ toward us is the representation of that faithful, everlasting love and is the thread that the entire gospel is woven around. God moved toward us in love, and you can see him doing this throughout the entire story of the wise men. The star itself moves ahead of them, guiding them on their way. That's God's love. And then God gives them discernment to see through the lies of Herod. That's God's love too. I was talking to Pastor Callum about this earlier this week, and he brought up to me that even the dream itself is a representation of God stepping into the story and showing the wise men his love through his faithfulness to point them away from Herod in the end. What love. So what can we do about this during Advent? How can we move toward God in love? If we do anything, the most important thing we can do, I believe, is to worship. I don't know about you, but I often find myself falling into a familiar pattern at Christmas. I I wanna hear certain songs and I get bummed out if they're not there and I want the candle lighting to look absolutely perfect. And I forget the fact that the entire essence of me loving God throughout the season is rooted in my capacity to worship him. The wise men fell down to worship Christ when they moved toward him and felt his love for them for the very first time. And friends, we are all called to be moved in exactly the same way by the love of God. Advent is a time to worship God with exceeding joy because of the great love that we feel toward him. So what would it look like if this week leading up to Christmas was a week of worship for you? What if the beautiful Christmas lights that we see every night were a mental reminder of the fact that the light entered into the world for us because he loves us and that that light of Christ is worthy of our worship and love? We'll never be perfect at moving toward God in love, but I believe that following the example of the wise men is a good place to start. And I invite all of you to worship with me as we move toward Christmas Eve, never forgetting that when you love someone, you move toward them. Let us pray. Holy Spirit, thank you for filling this room. I pray that you would give us the capacity to move toward you in love. And thank you for always moving toward us through song, through prayer, through our worship. In Christ's name we pray, amen.